Part Two: Other Lunch Recipes of a Little Cookbook for a Little Girl. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sweet Pea: A Little Cookbook for a Little Girl by Caroline French Benton. Part Two: Other Lunch Recipes. Shepherd's Pie. This was a dish Margaret used to make on wash day and house cleaning day, and such times when everybody was busy and no one wanted to stop and go to market to buy anything for luncheon. One cup of chopped meat, one cup of boiling water, one teaspoonful of chopped parsley, half teaspoonful of salt, one teaspoonful of lemon juice, or half teaspoonful Worcestershire sauce, butter the size of a hickory nut, two cups hot mashed potato, if the potato is cold, put half a cup of hot milk in it, beat it up well, and stand it on the back of the stove. Then mix all the other things with the meat, and put in the frying pan, and let it cook till it seems rather dry. Butter a baking dish, and cover the sides and bottom with a layer of potato an inch thick. Put the meat in the center, and cover it over with potato, and smooth it. Put bits of butter all over the top, and brown it in the oven. Serve with this a dish of chow-chow or one of small cucumber pickles. Chicken hash. One cup of cold chicken cut in small, even pieces. Half cup chicken stock or hot water. One teaspoonful chopped parsley. Half teaspoonful salt. A pinch of pepper. Butter the size of a hickory nut. Put the chicken stock, which is the water the chicken was cooked in, or in chicken broth, or, if there is none, the hot water, into the frying pan, and mix in the chicken and seasoning, and cook and stir until it is rather dry. Serve as it is, or on the squares of buttered toast. You can make any cold meat into hash this way, having it different every time. Sometimes you can put in the chopped green pepper as before, or a slice of chopped onion, or a cup of hot seasoned peas, or leave out half the soup or water, and put in a cup of stewed tomato. Broiled Sardines these little fish are really not broiled at all, but that is the name of the nice and easy dish. Take a box of large sardines and drain off all the oil, and lay them on heavy brown paper while you make four slices of toast. Trim off the edges and cut them into strips, laying them in a row on a hot platter. Put the sardines into the oven and make them very hot, and lay one on each strip of toast, and sprinkle them with lemon juice, and put sliced lemon and sprigs of parsley all around cheese fondue this was a recipe the pretty aunt put in margaret's book out of the one she had made at cooking school one cup fresh bread crumbs two cups grated cheese one cup of milk one bit of soda as large as a pea half teaspoonful of salt one pinch of red pepper one teaspoonful of butter two eggs put the butter in a saucepan to heat while you beat the eggs light without separating them let these stand while you stir everything else into the pan, beginning with the milk. Cook this five minutes, stirring all the time, and then put in the eggs and cook three minutes more. Put six large crackers on a hot platter and pour the whole over them, and send at once to the table to be eaten very hot. Sometimes Margaret made three or four slices of toast before she began the fondue, and used those in place of the crackers, and the dish was just as nice. Easy Welsh Rarebit two cups of rich cheese grated, yolks of two eggs, half cup of milk, half teaspoonful of salt, salt spoonful of cayenne. Make three nice slices of toast, cut off the crust, and cut each piece in two. Butter these, and very quickly dip each one in boiling water, being careful not to soak them. Put these on a hot platter in the oven. Put the milk in a saucepan over the fire, being careful not to have one that is too hot, only moderate, and when it boils up, put in the cheese, and stir without stopping, until the cheese all melts and it looks smooth. Then put in the beaten yolks of the eggs and the seasoning, and pour at once over the toast, and serve very hot. Many people like a salt spoonful of dry mustard mixed in with the pepper. You can also serve this rarebit on toasted and buttered crackers. Scalloped Cheese Six slices of bread, three quarters of a pound of cheese, two eggs, one tablespoonful of butter, one cup of cream, half teaspoonful of salt, half teaspoonful of dry mustard, quarter teaspoonful of paprika. 
butter the bread and cut it into strips and line the bottom and sides of a baking dish with it then beat the eggs very light without separating them and mix everything with them put in the dish and bake half an hour and serve at once veal loaf one and a half pounds of veal and two strips of salt pork chopped together half cup of bread crumbs one beaten egg half teaspoonful of grated nutmeg half teaspoonful of black pepper one and a half teaspoonfuls of salt bake three hours have the butcher chop the meat all together for you then put everything together in a dish and stir in the egg beaten without separating and mix very well press it into a bread pan and put in the oven for three hours by the clock every half hour pour over it a tablespoonful hot water and butter mixed you can put a tablespoonful of butter into a cup of water and keep it on the back of the stove ready all the time after the meat is baked two hours put in a piece of heavy brown paper over the top and keep it there till it is done or it may get too brown this is to slice cold it is very nice for a picnic pressed chicken this was one of the things margaret liked to make for sunday night supper have a good-sized chicken cut up and wipe each piece with a clean damp cloth put them in a kettle or deep saucepan and cover with cold water and cook very slowly and gently covered till the meat falls off the bones when it begins to grow tender put in a half teaspoonful of salt take it out and cut it up in nice even pieces and put all the bones back into the kettle and let them cook till there is only about a pint and a half of broth add a little more salt and a sprinkling of pepper and strain this through a jelly bag mix it with the chicken and put them both into a bread tin and when cold put on ice overnight after it has stood for an hour put a weight on it to make it firm slice with a very sharp knife and put on a platter with parsley all around this is a nice luncheon dish for a summer day as well as a supper dish when you have bits of cold meat which you cannot slice and yet which you wish to serve in some nice way make this rule which sounds difficult but is really very easy meat souffle one cup of white sauce one cup of chopped meat two eggs teaspoonful of chopped parsley half a teaspoonful minced onion put the parsley and onion in the meat and mix with the white sauce beat the yolks of the eggs and stir in and cook one minute and then cool beat the whites of the eggs and fold in and bake half an hour or a little more in a deep buttered baking dish you must serve this immediately or it will fall cold meats of course like other people margaret's mother often had cold meat for luncheon or supper and one of the things her cookbook told her was how to make it look nice when it came on the table always trim off all bits of skin and ragged pieces from the meat and remove the cold fat except on ham and then you must trim it to a rather narrow edge if you have a rather small dish for a large family put slices of hard-boiled eggs around the edge or make deviled eggs and put those around in halves sometimes you can cut lettuce in very narrow ribbons by holding several leaves in your hand at once folding them lengthwise and using a pair of scissors sometimes a dozen pimolas may be sliced across and put about the meat especially if it is cold chicken or turkey always use parsley with meat cold or hot saratoga potatoes make a good border for lamb or roast beef and cold peas mixed with mayonnaise are always delicious with either chicken or lamb if only the dish looks pretty it is almost certain to taste well sliced meat with gravy when there are a few slices left from a roast put them in a frying pan with some of the gravy left also and heat served with parsley around if there is not gravy take a little boiling water add a little salt pepper and half teaspoonful of minced onion and as much chopped parsley lay in the meat in the frying pan cover and let it simmer turning occasionally a few drops of kitchen bouquet will improve this it is a brown sauce which comes in small bottles some of the things margaret made for breakfast she made for lunch or supper too such as frizzled beef and scalloped eggs and omelettes she had some vegetables besides such as baked tomatoes six large tomatoes one cup bread crumbs half teaspoonful of salt one tablespoonful of butter one slice of onion put the butter in the frying pan and when it bubbles put in the bread crumbs the salt and onion with a dusting of pepper and stir till the crumbs are a little brown and the onion is all cooked 
Then take out the onion and throw it away. Wipe the tomatoes with a clean wet cloth and cut out the stem and a round hole or little well in the middle. Fill this with the crumbs, piling them up well on top. Put them in a baking dish and stand them in a hot oven. Mix a cup of hot water with a tablespoonful of butter. And every little while take out the baking dish and wet the tomatoes on top. Cook them about half an hour or till the skins get wrinkled all over. Serve them in the dish they are cooked in, if you like, or put each one on a small plate, pour some of the juice in the baking dish over it, and stick a sprig of parsley in the top. Stuffed Potatoes Wash six large potatoes and scrub them with a little brush till they are a nice clean light brown and bake them for half an hour in a hot oven, or if they are quite large, bake them till they are soft and puffy. Cut off one end from each and take out the inside with a teaspoon, holding the potato in a towel as you do so, for it will be very hot. Mix well this potato with two tablespoonfuls of rich milk or cream, a half teaspoonful of salt, and just as much butter, and put this back into the shells. Stand the potatoes side by side in a pan close together, the open ends up till they are browned. End of part two, other lunch recipes.